When making a project portable, batteries are definitely the most important thing to have. And these amazing pieces of tech aren't too expensive if you use a small amount of them for a few projects. However, when using a lot of them, they can get really expensive really fast. So the obvious solution is to salvage old batteries from old tech, but a lot of the time these batteries leak or they rust or just aren't usable because they're dead. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at where to find them, which ones are usable, and how to get them up and running again. The type of rechargeable battery we're looking for is lithium ion and lithium polymer. There are some slight differences between these two, but I'll talk more about that in just a second. We want to avoid other common batteries like alkaline, which is non-rechargeable and used in small electronics like remotes, and lead acid, which is rechargeable but mostly used in cars. Lithium ion batteries and lithium polymer batteries are pretty similar as they have very similar max charge cycles and very similar average voltages. Lithium has 3.6 and lithium polymer has 3.7 volts. And are found in a lot of consumer electronics such as laptops, phones, portable speakers, in fact they are found in pretty much any electronic device that advertises itself as portable. This means finding them for cheap or even free is often really really easy. I try to avoid these small devices though because they normally have tiny batteries that have a tiny milliamp hour rating. Milliamp hours are basically how many milliamps your battery can supply for an hour. So for example this battery has a thousand milliamp hours which means it can supply a thousand milliamps for an hour. So if you're powering a device that draws 100 milliamps with this battery, you could run it for about 10 hours. So, when I'm looking for lithium batteries, I always look for old laptops, as these have the highest quality battery brands and the most cells within them. But this is because most laptops typically operate at about 12 volts, or something pretty close to that. And as we now know, lithium cells operate at about 3.7 volts. Meaning, three cells have to be put in series to add up to 11.1 volts, which can be used to power the laptop. But three cells normally isn't enough for the laptop, so they use six. These six can still produce 11.1 volts because the six batteries are divided into three couples. Each of these couples are connected in parallel, which keeps the voltage at 3.7. Then the three couples are connected to each other in series, which produces 11.1 volts. What I'm trying to say is you'll typically find six batteries in a laptop, which is pretty good. So let's crack one of these open. Pull the battery out of your laptop. They're normally removable for the older ones. You should see a seam around the battery, wedge a screw in there and carefully pry it apart. This is definitely the worst part because manufacturers make it super difficult by adding excess amounts of glue. Anyway, once we got to the part, we need to carefully pull the battery pack out of its casing. You'll see the battery pack comes with a battery management system, which does a ton of cool stuff like monitoring the battery. Cut all the wires going to the battery management system and slowly peel the metal strips connecting the batteries together. Do not pull too hard. If they don't come off, just cut around the edges with some pliers. I found it's easy to do this in big batches, so I gathered a lot of battery packs and tore them all apart. Tearing batteries apart is surprisingly calming. I didn't mention this before, but finding these old laptop batteries is really, really easy. I got most of mine from an e-waste facility for really cheap, and the rest came from family and friends who had had the laptops for like over 10 years. Once we've got all the batteries out, we want to start looking for which ones are fully functional, which ones are dead, and which ones are nearly dead. We do this with a multimeter. If one of the batteries shows a voltage lower than 2.8 volts, we're going to want to avoid it, as this means it's over-discharged or dead, as lithium should never discharge lower than 3 volts, and should not charge higher than 4.2 volts. If a battery has a voltage lower than 1 volt, it's definitely dead, and should be disposed of at a battery recycling place. Now we should have a bunch of batteries, a pack of, mm, a gathering of batteries. Now we should have a group of cells. Actually, speaking of which, we should be calling these cells, not batteries, as batteries are defined as a collection of cells, and these 18650s are just one cell. These things are batteries, these things are cells. Anyway, now we should have a group of cells that all have a voltage above 3 volts and below 4.2. But this doesn't mean that your cell is fully healthy. We need to make sure it can hold the charge. We do this by charging all the way up to 4.2 volts and seeing if it can hold the charge a couple of days later. If the battery voltage drops significantly over a few days, it's not usable. The lithium charger I used is this one, which you can find for pretty cheap. The reason I like this one is because it has overcharge protection and over discharge protection, meaning it won't let the battery discharge to under three volts and it won't let it overcharge over 4.2, which is really nice. Now the laptop batteries I've been taking apart so far are pretty old. Now you'll find in most older laptops, they use 18650 cells, which are these cylinder ones. Now these 18650 cells are lithium ion and they're pretty great, but you'll find with most newer laptops that are thinner than these, that they use lithium polymer. Now the lithium polymer cells are exactly the same and can be used in the exact same way. 
but don't have a metal protective casing like the 18650 cells. So when handling them, just be a bit more careful. For a written up version with more details and links to the lithium charger I used, check the link in the description. If you want to find a use for your battery, check out this video where I use them to make a photography and video light, or subscribe for more. Thanks so much for watching.